what I'd like to do is let's go back to Photoshop and open up um, let's open up this concrete texture. I think this is kind of a cool one. This is also pretty simple. But I so it's this um, concrete texture seamless 64 dash 2. So these are sort of like prefab concrete panels. Um, what's nice about this is you can see there's some variety between them. Um, and there's just a little bit of, of sort of realistic feeling noise in here, but um, there's enough of them that when this copies, it starts to go away. Um, again, we'll, well, we'll save this one as it is, since we made adjustments. And then I'm going to do image adjustments, Q saturation. Desaturate it fully. I mean, that's pretty desaturated. I go to image adjustment, brightness, and contrast. I'm going to white wash it out. But you'll notice that this image, the the little spacing between the panel is actually not as high of contrast as the wood was, for example, where you had those really black lines. And what I want is like a sort of clean gap between these. So I'm gonna wash this out just enough so that, that I'm getting a, a nice subtle texture of the concrete panel itself. And then what I'll often do is I'll come in here and I'll actually draw in lines. So I'll go to the line tool and I'll change, let's see, yeah, it's about two thick. And I'll change the width to like two pixels and I will literally just draw in the spacing and all I'm doing is just using the line tool and holding shift so that it draws perfectly straight lines and now the tricky part is because this is seamless I need a sort of half panel or I need one I need a spacer at the bottom so and so that when it matches up with the one at the top it'll be a spacing between the re repetition of the image so I'm gonna just draw one here and then just kind of scoot it down so I'm just using the arrow to key to put that down at the very bottom so when this repeats and it hits the top we'll have It'll be empty at the top, but it'll have that line at the bottom as a seam. So this is making for a much more sort of crisp um, bump map here. I'm going to take all of those shapes. If I select one, hold shift, select shape 10, right click, I can merge them all together. So that's just my, um, my lines all combined. And this might be a little bit too crisp for reality because that's not quite a realistic edge there. Um, so to help fix that, I'm just going to go to um, Filter, Blur, uh, Gaussian Blur, and I'll have it rasterize the image. And I'm just going to rasterize it by like 0.5 pixels. Click OK. So now if I zoom in, see how there's just a little bit of blur there? That'll help make it feel like there's just a little tiny bit of an edge and not like a razor sharp edge. And I'm also going to lower the opacity just a little bit, which will help kind of thin those lines. Maybe 75. That's feeling pretty good. And now I'll save that as JPEG and the concrete textures, and I'll add bump. Um. Click OK. So back in Rhino, um, make a new material, call it. 
concrete panel. For the fuse layer, we'll go to our actual concrete panel uh, texture. Open, back. So reflection. So concrete has um, a lot more reflectivity than wood, um, and has a it can have you know you can get to polished concrete, which is starting to look almost like a mirror finish. Um, we're going to go somewhere in the middle. So and because this material is really light, I'm just going to change this all of it to white. And I'm going to change the reflection glossiness to maybe 0.75. Look at this as a wall and see how it's feeling. So we're starting to get a decent little reflective glow on this concrete. Um, I wouldn't go to 0.8. I think that'll feel too shiny. Um, we'll leave that. And then we'll go down to our map. Do a bump map again. Use the drop down, click on bitmap, we'll go to our seamless texture, okay, back, and now we're getting some like nice reveals between those to feel like more panelized. So let's minimize that. So for this, I'm just going to use the sort of main massing of the building, we'll just make the whole thing concrete. Um, so that's our exterior wall layer, click on material. Click on the drop down, go to B ray, browse, I have two materials. I'll use my concrete panel. Okay, okay. Let's look at this in rendered mode. You can see it's coming way out of scale. Um, so, this material is a lot easier to understand the scale, right? So, it's three wide by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tall. So, I'm going to say these are sort of one foot tall by three feet wide, so that would put us at nine feet wide total by eight feet tall. So if I come down to my material, do a box mapping, um, so it's going to be, I said nine feet wide, so nine feet by nine feet, and then the height is going to be eight feet. Enter. And so you can see that scale. See what I mean about that band? I didn't do a good enough job making that match the, the rest, so you can kind of see it through there, but we'll, we'll leave it up for now. It's less noticeable on the front. Um, but now we have that concrete texture mapped throughout. Let's go ahead and just do a quick test render and see how that's starting to feel. Yeah, so see things like this, just a little bit of shine right there makes it feel like it's an actual panel and not just a flat texture. So that's working pretty well. You can start to see it here and here as well on these sides. Um, as our concrete panel, the scale feels right. Uh, of course, there's a bunch of other missing pieces we're working through.